All right, good morning to all of you. Gary Ryan here with you with another Fed League Flash for Saturday, April 8th. And yes, I am wearing my new jersey. This is uh, quite intentional. <laughs> um, I figured this is a great conversation starter. So uh, anyway, yeah, this is my new favorite jersey. Um, Yes, I had it made like this on purpose because, well, now you get a little look inside my brain. Anywho, we are going to focus on the FPHL because there was a great night of history made last night. Uh, let's get started. Uh, if you haven't heard, Tyler Jurich is now the all-time goal-scoring leader in FPHL history. He surpassed Ahmed Mufuz last night as Binghamton uh, squeaked by Delaware 11 to 1. Um, George with two goals, uh, the, the, the tying goal and the, uh, the all time goal. Now, you're probably saying, you're looking at the board, there's a list of the, uh, the leaders in the FPHL, and you say, well, why do you say game tying and game, you know, surpassing when there's a two goal difference? I'm going off of stats combined with Hockey DB and Elite Prospects. Now the FPHL was in contact with the Binghamton Black Bears organization and said, uh, you know, he's been he was at 295, and they said no, he needs to. Uh, Mafuz has 296. So, I'm just going by official stats. Um, <laughs> okay, so Tyler George, congratulations. Um, he's worked very hard. Uh, if you don't know, he had a shoulder injury, uh, was out of action for a little over a month. And so, he really had to work hard to get himself back and going again and... Uh, yeah, he's firing on all cylinders. So, Tyler George, congratulations again. Uh, awesome accomplishment. And that, that really is a, a really big deal at this level of uh, the minor leagues. So, yeah, Black Bears 11, Delaware 1, shots on goal 76 to 25. Um, 76 shots was too short of an all time record for the club. Um, one time last year, they got 78 shots. Uh, so, Jurch had the goal, and, two goals, and an assist. Uh, Chad Lopez, six points on the night. One of two FPHL players to tally six points. Had three goals, three assists. Yep, got the Hattie. Uh, Austin Thomas uh, Thompson chipped in a goal and four assists. And, uh, and now the surprising stat of the day, there was only 10 penalty minutes doled out the entire game. Um it was the price. Uh, Dennis Gafarov scored for Delaware. Unfortunately, it was a very, very tough night for Delaware goaltending. Uh, both Kozlowski and Diego. Uh, but anyway, the other big story uh, with this game, Binghamton becomes the first FPHL team in league history to surpass 100,000 in total attendance during the year. Um, right now, they're like... 102,000 uh, plus. So, um, great night in Binghamton. Um, other great nights. Port Huron had a pretty great night, winning 4-1 to one, uh, over Watertown. Traveled up to the Watertown Municipal Arena and handled uh, the Wolves. Uh, Dalton J, who you see on the list here, and Matt Graham, who you also see on the list here, each had a goal and an assist. Uh, Evan Foley got the game-winning goal a uh, minute into the third period. Uh, Everett Thompson uh, managed to get one home uh, to break uh, break up Brian Talio's bid for a shutout uh, for the lone Wolves goal. Uh, Talio saved 26 of 27 shots for the win. And uh, Port Huron gained a little ground, I guess you could say, in a way. Um, because they won and Motor City lost. Uh, we'll talk about Motor City a little bit uh, more in just a bit. 
Okay, elsewhere, uh, I want to stay on the focus of Watertown. Um, you know, again, they lost, uh, really struggling in their last 10 games. Danbury uh, ends up squeaking past Elmira, 4-3. Uh, to three. Elmira made a game of this, um, despite a huge discrepancy in shots. It was 50-26 to 26 in favor of Danbury. Uh, Danbury offensive machine just keeps rolling along. Uh, they are... Uh, they are in really good shape, ready for the playoffs. Uh, Daniel McKittrick had two goals and an assist for the hat tricks. And Michael McKazen got the game-winning goal. He had a goal and an assist. Uh, that game-winning goal was a shorthanded goal. Um, and at that point, it made things 4-2. to two. Uh, Elmira um, got a late goal from uh, college sensation Joshua Sanchez, who was really been playing fantastic since uh, since turning pro. Um, but this wasn't enough for Elmira. So Elmira falls. So now there's four games left uh, for both Watertown and Elmira. They have a head uh, they have a contest coming up a head to head on next Wednesday. But right now the point difference is six. Uh, Watertown with 53 points, Elmira with 47. Um, but with time running out, basically that means Watertown's magic number to clinch the third seed and the opportunity to take on the Black Bears is now seven points. That's a combination of uh, points gained by Watertown or points lost by Elmira. Elmira would then get the dubious task of taking on Danbury again. So, but... Uh, it's a good sign that Elmira played well in this game and uh, made a game of it. So, who knows? You know, in the playoffs, in a best of three series, anything can happen. So, we will see. All right, elsewhere, uh, Columbus, uh, the Battle of Titans here. Um, they ended up squeaking by the Carolina Thunderbirds uh, in the shootout. It was three to two. And uh, what a game this was. Uh, this was really tight the whole way. Um, you know, both teams not wanting to give an edge. Uh, Carolina took a one-goal lead twice in this game in regulation, but both times Carolina came back, uh, Columbus, excuse me, came back to tie it. Uh, Columbus peppered Boris Babic, 51 shots, and uh, you know, Babic saved 49. So, uh, absolute fantastic performance by Babic. Uh, Carolina still without um, Mario Cavalier at this point, but uh, they also have Greg Hussey. So, you know, goaltending-wise, they're fine. Um, hopefully, Cavalier can get back in time for the playoffs, but, uh, you know, he's still battling that, uh, that uh, lower body injury. Um in this game, uh, Michael Greco and uh, Jacob Schnapp decided to do a little dance at the 1902 mark of the third period and uh, decided advantage to Greco in that one. It was uh, not even close. And uh, then after both teams and uh, both players ended up going to the box, uh, Schnapp had a few extra words and then earned the game misconduct. So he was not a part of the overtime or the shootout. Uh Jacob Kelly scored the only goal of the shootout um, and a real, real nifty move by, uh, by Kelly to uh, beat Babbitt. So now Columbus has a two point lead in the standings, three games to go. It's 113 points for Columbus, 111 for Carolina. And uh, the last three games, you know, they're, they're head to head. So, uh, this is kind of almost like a play-in series, um, just to determine seeding. Both teams are, you know, home home ice advantage for the first round of the playoffs. It's just a matter of who's first, who's second. So fantastic, fantastic game. Um, really, really well played. Um, so congratulations to both teams. Obviously, you know, you'd like to get three points, but they both managed to get one point in Columbus's case, two for the contest. All right, the other game, Mississippi uh, easily 
handling the visiting Motor City Rockers 6-2 to two in an inexplicably just bad game for uh, Motor City. And I'm not saying that to take anything away from Mississippi. They have been playing very well as of late. Um, the Seawolves seem to have uh, really found their stride. And even though um, you know they still have a lot more losses than wins and obviously are not part of the playoffs, uh, they're, they're not an easy team to play. Um, so Motor City started off the game, uh, with goaltender Ricardo Gonzalez. Um, uh, Trevor Babin has been out late lately. Um, he is expected back in time for the playoffs, if not before. Uh, but, uh, Gonzalez surrenders five goals pulled at the 957 mark of the second period. And, uh, Blake Scott came in and, uh, tried to stop the bleeding, but at that point it was already too late. For the Rockers. Uh, curious in that there were no coaches on the Motor City board, uh, on, on the bench. Um, didn't see Brown, didn't see Giuliano. Um, I'm not sure why that was, but literally the only people on the bench besides the players were the EQ and a team photographer. So uh, it's kind of strange. Um, yeah, Christian Gardecki uh, alerted me to that. And uh, so then, you know, I switched over and was like, yeah, that looks strange. All right. Uh, so anyway, with the game, uh, Jake Raleigh, who's had a fantastic rookie season, three goals, two assists. Uh, Yaroslav Yevdokimov, there it is, uh, six assists on the night. He was the second player besides Binghamton's Chad Lopez to tally Six points on the night. So you have Dokimov uh, solidifies, so to speak, his hold on second place in the, uh, the points race. Um, he's got, I believe, a one-point edge over teammate Yanni Lariakos, who had two goals and two assists. So the offensive machine keeps uh, plugging along as well in Mississippi. Uh, scoring for Motor City was Derek Makma and uh, Tim Perks. Um, there were two occurrences during the game, one by Makama and one by Roman Gaudet, uh, where they were given games and misconducts for hits from behind. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if anything comes down today in the uh, suspensions wire. Um, not really sure. So anyway, all that to say this, Motor City now has, still has a magic number of one to clinch third in the Continental uh, Division race. Um, you know, time has pretty much run out on the Prowlers. All right, so we're looking. Those are the leaders. Uh, now, after uh, after Justin Brossom, I just listed active players. Uh, but Jurich, Mafuz, Jay, and Brossom are the only four that have 200-plus goals. Um, now I made a note there, Justin Broston did not play this year. Uh, obviously his rights were held by Delaware all year, uh, never played a game. Um, basically sat out the whole year. Matt Robertson, um, he's got more play, uh, uh playing experience in the SPHL than the FPHL. Uh, he came back and played, uh, two games this year. Uh, I'm not sure if he is most likely done, uh, with his career playing, but, uh, he stands, at uh, 133, and then we have uh, Matt Graham still plugging along. Uh, Molavac, he's the other one. Not really sure if he's going to be able to continue his career. He ended his year unfortunately with a concussion. He's one of the original FHL members. Um, he's been playing in the Fed since day one. I'm not really sure if he's going to be able to return. I hope he does. I really hope he can return next year and uh, yeah, end his career his way rather than going out with an injury. So anyway, the other note I want to make, I'm confused as far as if somebody can clarify this for me. Joe Pace is playing his 500th Fed game. Either, well, he either played it last night or it's tonight. I'm not really sure. I got some mixed data. So let me know. I'm out of time, so I got to... Neat. 
Thank you for listening and watching. Uh, hit like and subscribe. I'm Gary Ryan for the Fed League Flash, and we will tune in back again here tomorrow.